Hello traders, welcome to the weekly outlook setups volume 203. Ilya here tuning in as always, you know what we're going to be doing in this video, having a look at the markets, how it developed this week, what kind of opportunities we had, and most importantly, what we can expect for the upcoming week. Now, this week was very slow, especially like from Monday to Wednesday. And then on Thursday and Friday, we did some moves. We actually followed through on our macro bias, but on the majority of the pairs, it was a little bit hard to get in. Or personally, I got in into one single trade this week and uh, I got stuck in it for like two hours. Then it stopped out at break even and then it massively ran to targets. Pretty much London session was very choppy. Then New York was making the move. So it was not a great week overall. And next week, we are going to be having a lot of busy stuff. So it's going to be very busy. We have so many news. So we got to be really careful. And of course, let's see how this week played out. What we can potentially forecast for the next week but again i'm gonna try to um, not forecast that much because it's it's pretty much futile we're we're not gonna we never know what's gonna happen especially when there are news like this there are gonna be whipsaws there are gonna be huge moves so again don't try to forecast too much just wait for the market to develop and then of course we're gonna see what happens okay if you're new to this channel, it's all about trading, sharing this weekly outlook and setups every Saturday. And once per week, I'm going to be sharing an educational piece of content or a trading setups breakdown video from very, very, very soon. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on the notification bell in order not to miss when any video gets published. And if you already did that, now let's head into the analysis. All right, as always, we're going to get started with a Dixie. But before we do that, let's check out the news. Again, a lot of you corrected me last week because I was looking at uh, this current week instead of the previous week of news. Again, excuse me for that. I make mistakes sometimes. So pretty much uh, on Monday, we're starting with some PMIs right there for the pound, for the USD and for the euro and for Germany. So very, very, very huge. Again, you can see all of those are a red impact. And I have also filtered out the news to be only red. There is also medium and there is also low impact among them. All right. Tuesday, ECB bank lending survey. So that not sure how important it is. Right. But then, of course, on Wednesday, we have interest rate decision, Fed policy statement and press conference. And we also have uh, CPI for the Aussie. So very, very, very huge day, especially the Fed. And then following the Fed immediately on the next day during New York session, we have uh, interest rates for uh, Euro and GDP for the US and then a press conference from the ECB and then on Friday we have CPI for Germany we have uh, interest rate for, for from Bank of Japan and then we have also a discord personal consumption expenditures this is not CPI but it's also pretty important when we judge inflation so a lot of news but pretty much of course the highlight is of course going to be uh, the interest rate from the Fed and of course interest rate from the ECB we do expect to hike it to 3.75 so 25 basis points and when it comes to the Fed uh, we, it's also expected to be hiked by uh, to um, 0.25 basis points so of course let's see how that goes let's see what Powell says and then of course we can draw more conclusions now back to the charts uh, DXY this week as you can see like uh, after Following that massive bearish engulfing candle, what do we have is an inside bar. So the market did not take out the previous weekly low and it just pulled back. Okay, so of course the weekly time frame is right now bearish like we, we first broke here, although it was a minimal break. It was a break and then we broke right there. So technically right now we are bearish on the weekly time frame. However, you should know that we are pretty bullish on the monthly time frame. Like if the monthly low starts from here all the way to there, just get a simple FIP. Right, you can see that we crossed below the 50% and right now we could start expecting for the market to go up and to become stronger. Now, this of course will depend on the macro outlook. So let's see what uh, how the current interest rates are going to go, which is going to determine whether we go short from here or whether we start reversing into the highs. But so far, bearish bias, dropping onto the daily. The daily range is exactly the same as the weekly range. So we're having this high to this low. We have plenty of imbalance. Right, we have plenty of imbalances to fulfill. Like there was one here, one here, one here, and then all the way up to here. Right. So again, a lot is there to be filled. So again, I usually what I usually do in order to get the high probability imbalance target is usually around or above the 50% in this case. So that will be the first one that I'm gonna be looking to fulfill. And as we see that there is a daily pullback, which again started happening like on you see Monday and Tuesday were absolutely choppy. Then Wednesday gave us a little bit of a hint. Then of course Thursday was was the best day. And then on Friday, we just got a little bit of a follow through. So if you also have a look like on the on the quality time frame, like you got to make an exception right there because 
according to me, like as I told you previously, according to me, the lower high is right there. I, I don't look at the DXY anymore in my in my live trading, so I kind of forget what happens right there. But pretty much what I do believe in terms of my own way of marking structure, that is the lower high and that is the lower low on the four hour time frame as well. So there is no like structure break here. There is no trend change. Those are all internal breaks. And while you can take those internal breaks, you should always be aware that they are not as strong. OK, so what I would expect to happen is, of course, for the market to come in right there, create that forward trend change. And then from there, I'm going to be looking for a bearish trend change in order for the market to then show me the bearish signs. Now, it could it could come all the way up here. It could maybe just tap the 50 percent and go, which means that it's going to respect, for example, this uh, for our supply zone right there uh, but again the overall macro big bias is bearish for now uh, but of course i would expect uh for the market to start with some bullishness drive us into the highs a little bit drive us to the 50 percent on the daily and then from there we're gonna see what's gonna happen now if you want to trade internal structure then of course you can look at this quality break quality demand zone so if the market starts a little bit bearish pulls back right there go to your minor time frames like the 50 minute time frame wait for the alignment and then go long towards that imbalance and towards the 50 percent okay but keep in mind this is internal like if there was a break here if there was a break here a lower low and then the market broke the lower high then that would have been good but again there is no break so that's the dxy again trying to um, not forecast that much but again i would expect like a little pullback maybe at the beginning of the week and then tuesday maybe to drive us into the highs and then wednesday is probably going to be within this poi and then of course we're going to see what's going to happen so again guys try not to forecast too much just wait for the news and then of course react after them euro usd was very tricky this week up until like wednesday and thursday and also friday was was good but again no no tradable opportunities unfortunately so once again this one on the weekly it broke here it broke there it's bullish on the week again you can take this as your major weekly higher low formation you can take this as your major weekly range and right now we're pulling back towards the 50 percent and you can see also as this weekly candle is going to close there is going to be a weekly imbalance so we can definitely expect for the market to pull back here and then from there we're going to see whether it's going to hold and continue going bullish or maybe if it's going to break down again we don't know dropping onto the daily exactly the same as the dixie the the weekly range is exactly the same as the daily range daily low daily high right weekly low weekly high traveling towards fulfilling all the imbalances that we have we have one here we have uh one all the way down there so again which one is going to get filled we don't know personally i just want to see a tap of the 50 percent and maybe that weekly imbalance being fulfilled and then of course from here we're going to see like on the forward time frame is it going to continue going deeper or is it going to stop give us a forward bullish shift and then for us to start going long so currently in that beautiful pullback mode and you can see once again like it started going on wednesday like monday and tuesday and then thursday was great and then friday was was choppy so not very nice pa uh, but pretty much we forecasted it nicely like here it kind of gave a couple of of wicks but again as i keep telling you start observing the breaks like you can see here we wick down then here we, we close with a body we went up which is which is nice uh, but then here we also close uh, created like this trend change which was with a the wick then it came up and then it came down so after this break right there i was pretty sure and this is pretty much thursday and i do and this is pretty much where i took my short i was absolutely sure that this one was good well again i shouldn't speak like this because you can never be absolutely sure uh but all the confluences were aligning for a short trade right and it was from a quality supply it gave a clear break it had the imbalance it pulled back above the 50 percent and it just developed amazingly but again I, i'm gonna show you my trade in a bit which i got stopped out of break even so Currently, where are we? Well, we pushed very nicely to the downside. There was a very nice expansive move down. And right just right now on Friday, we kind of came in. And we wick, we're we kind of wicking below this forward low. Wick down, wick down. So currently, the positioning of prices is, is not amazing. This is what I'm just going to say. It's, it's not amazing, right? It's in the middle of nowhere. It's not a very clean break. It's, it's filling in also imbalances right there. So I really can't predict how Monday is going to go in that case. It could definitely go short. I mean, it can just maybe give us a little pullback and then continue going down to potentially rebalance the imbalance, pull back into the 50%. It could maybe even reverse and pull us back a little bit higher, although I don't think so. If the market is going to go long in terms of the macro bias, it's going to start bearish, pull us back into demand, pull us back into 50% and imbalance. So all of this here is a high probability area for a long. 
And then, of course, we're going to have to look for a flowery bullish alignment. Like right now, very hard to forecast, especially like knowing how choppy it was uh, on Friday. It's very, very, very hard to forecast. So once again, as I always say, wait for Monday to open. Let's see how we can react. Stay tuned for Tuesday. And then, of course, we're going to see what happens. OK, so those are my two out outcomes right now, the two scenarios that I think could happen. So nothing much to forecast. Again, let's leave the market to show us now. The trade I took this week, again, my pretty much my only trade uh, was on uh, Thursday. Yep, on Thursday. So again, as I told you, like we had a beautiful development, beautiful development on Thursday. We had like this fairly low with momentum. We pulled back way above. We took a lot of liquidity. The market aligned bearish on the 15 minute time frame, which was right there. Um, then the market pulled back, grabbed some more liquidity, and then it gave us this beautiful push down. So again, on the retest, this was a uh, set and forget entry. So how I did manage this one is pretty much I took my trade from here, right? The market gave a beautiful reaction. But then I we also took this with Fanatic Model 2, which is uh, one of our three strategies right now that I introduced within the revamp. And then, of course, I was looking for Fanatic Model 1 from here. So I didn't go break even on that trade, but I was looking for Fanatic Model 1, which got provided right there. But I did not take it because it entered my dead hour, which is 12, 12 o'clock. I don't trade at that time. So after this push, I was like, okay, well, if it doesn't go right now, then probably it won't, or I just want to secure. And then what I did is I reduced my stop loss above this high right there. And then the market chopped around. Guess what it did? It just came in, whoop, stopped me out, massively responded. But then again, I couldn't have taken this trade because my main range low is here. So we're trading between this high and this low. And like this here is what is an internal break. So maybe like around New York, you, I could have maybe taken another trade, but I was just like, I just leave it. It's choppy. Maybe it's not going to go. And then it just kind of came in, reacted, came in again. It just whoop, massively flushed. Of course, my target was the fairly low, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not pissed at all because the loss was minimal. I got stopped out on um, this one right there. So once again, as a reflection, micromanagement sucks. Just let your trade run, either TP or stop loss, or only move to break even when it makes complete sense. Like at that time, did it make complete sense? Well, not really, because again, like the market tapped, reacted, came in, reacted. Okay, but did this reaction here cause any structure break? Well, not really. Well, then technically this high was weak. And then it came in, took the weak high again, then it followed through, and then this push down actually caused like an internal break. So again, I could have held this trade. I did not. So let's not stress about it. It was a break-even trade. And pretty much that's my only trade for the week. So it's kind of a break-even slash a very, very minimal loss week. And that is perfectly fine because we are in profits for the month. So that's your USD. Let's see how it goes. And right now, let's carry on. Well, UJ went nicely bullish this week. So after giving us that little pullback, it is already attacking and making a new weekly Hard high formation. So technically right now, I would love to see maybe one more week to push above to kind of draw this demand zone. Uh, we didn't really come to fulfill much imbalance. Uh, you can see just kind of fulfilled the high right there and then it reacted. So again, bullish on the weekly. When it comes to the daily time frame, like pretty much this move happened on Friday. Right, you can see Monday chop, Tuesday chop, Wednesday kind of pushed up, uh, Thursday chop, and then Friday kind of made a move, which is uh, probably some sort of news we had on Friday or, or something. I don't know, uh, but we're having like this little sp spike above that previous weekly high. So this immediately makes it super tricky once again to forecast, like so tricky, like it just took out the high. So it's possible for, for it to continue impulsing for a little bit more and then start pulling back. It's possible for it to start pulling back down. I just don't know. I just don't know. We have this weekly weekly push, which is the same as like with the daily push. So if I just draw a zone right here, also hard to spot like a proper demand zone. So I'm just going to go to the foliage. And yeah, like you can see the foliage. If I just remove this man, this one doesn't look good. Broke up, broke down, broke up. And yeah, then as it broke up, this one is not a valid higher low formation. So this is the push, the pullback, and pretty much that is your trade. I mean, if you took that trade somehow, then that pretty much is your trade and your demand zone was this. Uh, it actually got tapped like that was your range right there. Pulls back. Nice. So if you manage to catch this long trade, then that is pretty much your trade. Right now, we have a brand new structure break. We have a brand new demand zone. We have a brand new forward range. So again, if I just keep it extremely simple, right? Pull back, higher low, and then go long. But again, keep in mind that we just took out that massive liquidity to the left. 
and uh, the market could definitely pull back, but where it could pull back to, well, the most recent hourly or daily range. So is there imbalance? Yes, there is. There it is. And that's pretty much the only imbalance that I see on the voyage. That's pretty much the only one. So again, I would expect for this one to be filled, pull us back right there. And if UJ permits after Friday's like interest rate decision and press conference, then maybe uh, the JPY pairs could go up. Okay, so let's see, let's see how it's gonna open, preferably I would prefer a bearish open. What could happen, of course, is what I see right now, is we might have a new structure break right there, and that could act as a liquidity gap, so we might have a break, and then a TC down, and then the market could go down, and then you just do this setup again, right? Because then if the market breaks up here, then that is gonna be your higher low formation, then if it breaks, then you take a short into the long, and then from here, you look for a long, okay? So that is what I could potentially forecast, but as I keep saying, don't forecast way too much this week. Let's have a look at the Aussies, starting from AU. So what I first see is an inside bar on the weekly. So we have this weekly high, we have this weekly low, and this week's candle stayed within those two highs and lows. So next week, we can expect some sort of a breakout, okay? Just judging by our overall macro time frame on this, well, it's bullish because we had this weekly break. The market pulled back, fulfilled that weekly imbalance right there. And right now we reacted and we came very close to taking out that weekly high, which is right now a great liquidity target, but we did not. So again, what is it cooking for? I don't know. Coming into the daily time frame, well, the daily time frame is still within that same range. Daily low, daily high, the market pulled back all the way down. And I'm very surprised why didn't this high get taken? Because right now this is very tricky because again, if this low fails to cause a break of the high, then it's weak. So all of this could be liquidity. So what is very, very kind of possible, because we have that little bit of imbalance left right there. What is also possible, which, which is an idea that I could entertain, is we drop down, we take out this as liquidity, we fill in that imbalance, and then from there we explode. So that is something that could happen because, again, even if we break below this low, that is not going to change the daily because the daily time frame still has this as the major low, this is the major high, and this low is right now liquidity, okay? But oftentimes, like, the market can pull back a little bit and then it push, okay? So those are my two macro scenarios because, again, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to, to go down. I mean, everything is supporting longs, so I'm long biased, but again, the question is, are we maybe going to react from somewhere right here, which is not a very strong demand. Why? Well, because it didn't break anything. It broke internal structure, which is still fine, uh, but let's see if we, what we have on the voyage. Maybe the forward is going to offer us some more clues. Well, on the voyage, um, is this equals right there? So the high is uh, 948, the high is 951. So there was a breakup, there was a breakup, and then technically there is a TC down. I do believe I mentioned this in the last outlook, so there is a TC down. Then we have a breakdown, and then the market quickly comes in for a quick train change, which does look like right now in hindsight it was a liquidity grab. And then we break lower. Mm, so it's, no, it's not this that caused the break, but that is a very good supply zone. Come on. So there's a supply zone. And pretty much we have the extreme, which is also the major folly range. So we're currently traveling towards somewhere. So we're probably filling in that imbalance that was left here on the daily. Although, once again, I really don't like zones that don't cause any breaks of structure. Like this push right there happened very nicely, but it didn't break the high. So technically it could be liquidity. Right now the market is filling in that uh, daily imbalance. So what I would really love to see on AU is for the four hourly time frame to shift bullish. So he's going to make a new lower high right now, drop, and then make a TC and give us a long trade. I don't know. Is going to break this high or this high? I don't know, right? Uh, but again, currently, I don't think there are any clean setups on, on AU. And not sure if any of you managed to catch any trades on, on AU this week, because it may be like there. I see just a continuation right there. Took out the high, reversed. I just don't know. I don't trade the Aussie anymore at all. So... That's my outlook on the Aussie. I mean, it's it's stuck within this big daily range. This low failed to cause a high, so could become liquidity, so we can flush all the way down. But also what is possible is we're just pulling back, filling in that daily imbalance, and then from here, maybe we reverse on the forward to the upside, and then we target the liquidity high, okay? So currently, when it comes to a setup, I don't know, because we are sitting at a lower low right now. We have like two supplies on top. So if you want to take a long trade, then of course, wait for intraday liquidity to be grabbed, wait for the 50 minute to align bullish and then take a long towards the shorts because our current forward range is this. 
okay? If not, if it's not clear, if you don't know what you're doing, then just step aside, find another pair or just don't trade. Because again, that's what trading is all about. Trading something that makes sense. Aussie end, uh, pushed up, pulls back, good. Uh, we're filling in that imbalance right there, which we actually did very nicely, almost uh, fully. And we had a bullish reaction this week. On the daily time frame, similar to the Aussie, like that's the daily low, that's the daily high, pull back below 50%, nice. So what we need to see right now is a clear hourly alignment. So again, here we had a, the train change happened here, but then we have one up, we have down, we have down. Here we have the train change up, and then we have a structure break up. We have a brand new demand like this, and there is a trade. There is a trade. So we have a brand new range. The market already pulled back below the 50%. Uh, so if this, this low can become liquidity, if it fails to push, to push up from here, so outcome one and outcome two, right? I would expect longs maybe on, on AJ because it's just long bias, also supporting that from the daily and the weekly time frame. You can, of course, start observing right now for, for liquidity grabs to the left. Like that is the next target because the, the most recent target that got taken was this. And as you can see, we just took it out. The market reacted. So it's just reacting, pulling back into the demand. Right now, we're going to go take out the next one, react again. Then we're going to go take out the next one, react again. Take out the next one, react, right? It's just going to keep taking until it takes out the major high when we're going to have a major pullback, okay? So that's AJ. Looks pretty good for longs. Uh, I do believe like this low could be weak. So we can come in deeper into the zone, then give us a five minute train change. And then from there, we can attack for longs. But again, that really depends on the on the overall JPY sentiment. So make sure if you're trading the JPYs to monitor the JPY sentiment alone, at all, uh, overall. Uh, but yeah, those are the Aussies. Aussie dollar, not very clean, more kind of inclining towards bearishness, but I would love to see a bullish shift. AJ is fully bullish. A very sharp bearish reaction this week on the NZD, which is quite surprising. Again, I don't trade the NZDs um, personally, but uh, always interesting to see how they how they go. So we just broke out this high with a little wick and right now we're just massively retracing back down. So of course, this is still our major high low formation. So is it pulling back to retest or is it going to be reversing? I don't know. The daily time frame, well, the daily... You could look at it the different ways. You can still take this as your low and this is your high, which is according to me valid. Okay, but you can also draw like a range from here or also a range from here. So now this really depends on how you draw structure. Okay, and now this week since Monday, like bearish, 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 bearish. Like where is this one going and why is it going down? Like do, do any of you have any idea maybe why is the NZD so weak? Do we have any news on the NZD? I'm not sure because I don't monitor the pair. But what I immediately see is that there is there are a lot of flat loads right there. So very, very, very flat. Now, uh, first one got taken. Second one also got taken. There it is. So we're tapping inside that weekly demand zone. Uh, but it's very bearish. I mean, it's very bearish. And where is our last valid hourly hard low? Uh, it was pretty much this one. So you can see we came all the way down to make a hourly bearish trend change. Why? This is not a hard low. This is not a hard low. This is also, according to me, not a hard, not a hard low. So pretty much the hard low on the forge was this. It came in, it broke it, and then pretty much what caused the break, it's this right there. So right now, what we can be looking for is for a bullish forward alignment. So maybe a trend change like this, and then to go long, or maybe a new range to form lower high, lower low, then break this, and then potentially go up. So I don't want to say I'm very long biased on this one because I'm scared of this massive drop to the downside and why did it happen like this? Like we had a massive push up, like on the weekly, we had a massive push up and right now we're having an even massive push down. That is also kind of an engulfing candle. So rather scary, rather interesting. Uh, but again, let's see, like this is my outlook. We're tapping inside the weekly demand. We are taking all of these uh, flat lows right there. We're causing a forward structure break, or I should say, I should say a trend change to the downside. So if we get any bullish forward alignment, that is when I'm going to be looking for longs. But again, if you wish to go short, then definitely do so. Because if you ignore everything else, and if you just focus on what is happening right now, the market is just going down. The momentum is down. So we can, of course, like look for a look for a pullback and then take a short as well. Okay, so that's the NZD. Uh, let me know, guys, what you think in the comments and if you're trading the NZDs and maybe why did this big push to the downside happen? Similar with NJ, like this one is bullish on the weekly time frame. There is the weekly higher low formation, daily time frame. It broke up, 
then it broke down, it pulled back to the 50%. Yeah, there is still a little bit of imbalance left, but again, this might not get filled in right now. We reacted down, and right now we're having, uh, well, we have we have three days of an inside bar. Like, here, this day, which is the day Tuesday, pushed down, and then we have three days staying inside that Tuesday's candle. So the forwardy time frame is going to be very, very, very tricky. So the forwardy aligned bullish here, then it aligned bearish here. Uh, then it broke bearish here as well. And... Uh, yeah, still we're staying inside this big supply zone. So we're bearish. I just don't like it. I'm just going to say I don't like it. And I would just not touch NZJPY if I was trading it. Like, stuck in the middle of nowhere in the daily. Uh, stuck for three days inside this range. Like, came in, reacted. Came in, reacted. Came in, reacted. Right? It just keeps taking out this high. That's like the EU trade I took. Right? Just comes in, reacts. Takes out the high, reacts. Takes out the high, reacts. So is it going to push or not? Come on. Do something. Right? So that's uh, NJ, very big inside bar, is going to take out the highs, is going to take out the low, I don't know. So again, if you don't know, then just don't trade. So according to me, the NZDs, not very clear, also together with the Aussies, although, for example, AJ, Aussie JPY, looked much, much better than NJ, so if you're trading the NZDs, be careful. Let's have a look at the JPY driver, USD JPY. So we had an overall kind of two bearish weeks, and right now we're having a very nice bullish week, which is also an inside bar of the previous one so we can expect some sort of a breakout where does it make sense to go or well, maybe bullish again i mean this one came down towards like a, a monthly pullback and then we aligned bullish on the weekly right there so the weekly is currently bullish again the question is what is the valid range that caused the break is it this low is it this low again it really depends on how you take it if we take it like this you can see from the lowest point we also tapped the 50 percent and we also kind of came in to very slightly fulfill that little imbalance right there so there is a lot of clues for longs but the daily is just stupid all right so we just kind of it's not one it's not the one so here we aligned bearish on the daily so technically right now the daily range is this uh while we tapped on a, on a like on a weekly higher low and below the 50 percent so Massive bullishness, is it going to respect and go down or is it just going to push up? I don't know. I am personally more for the long side. Let me know guys in the comments what you think. Are we going up or are we going down? Uh, but again, if you just look on the 40 time frame, again, we aligned bullish here. We went bullish, 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 bullish. So there is the last break right there. Similar to like the EJ and AJ, I believe. We pushed up new range, right? That's the current PD range. So we can be looking for a pullback in the long. But of course, what the market could do. Is it first thing in the in the in the morning on, on Monday it can take out the high, then reverse, then maybe a short into the long, and then from there we can look for a long. So that's my outlook. But again, I don't like to forecast way too much right now because uh, with all the uncertainty that is incoming, we also have on Friday we have an um, interest rate decision for like the interest rate for Japan doesn't change. But what is important is the press conference, monetary policy statements, and what they're pretty much gonna say about the JPY. Okay. So that's the JPY, not very clear in terms of the macro bias, like when you have like weekly, the weekly time frame being bullish, or maybe it's also bearish, maybe this is a trend change right there, right? Then the daily time frame made this massive push down, right now it's making this push up, right? And then the forward time frame is bullish. Again, when you have this sort of uh, confusion between all the time frames, uh, you don't have a high probability trade idea, so again, it's much better not to engage but again let's see how the forward will develop and of course what we can uh, see what we can make of it ucat is being a typical ucat just chopping around right there in this range uh for what is it like five weeks already kind of gave a little pull well not really chopping because it pushed down it pulled back lower high then it made a lower low and right now we're having an inside bar so dropping onto the daily time frame let's have a look at the daily range so the daily time frame kind of aligned bullish here it broke bullish Broke bullish there, then immediately aligned bearish, and right now we're trading between this high and this low. We just think the 50% on Tuesday, we tried to react, and right now the market is coming in bullish, which means that maybe this high could be liquidity, because that is a high that fails to cause a break of the low. There is also a little bit of an imbalance to be maybe still fulfilled to, to the fullest, like to the 50% or maybe above. So I am more bearish than I am bullish on UCAT, but again, this pair, I just, I just don't like it. When it comes to the 4H, oh man, look at this 4H. Um, so this one broke down here and then the high was there. So we kind of 
took out the high with a wick. Then we went down and then we went up and then the last break is here. So there is your most recent market structure on uh, USD cat. It's bullish. So, I mean, if this high is liquidity, it will, if, if the market starts bearish, it will make sense for us to target this. So this is my only trade idea. If the market starts bullish and takes out liquidity and fills in imbalance, then from there, we're going to see what's going to happen. And maybe we can even take a short, like on the 50 minute. So that's your cat for me. Not very clear, but again, we just broke it down. That is the current situation. This is what we can work on. So either a pullback short to take a long, or if it goes long first, then shorts will be high probability because we're going to be taking liquidity, filling in imbalance. And, and of course, we are bearish on the daily. So let's see. That's UCAT. And of course, guys, for the UCAT traders, let me know what you think in the comments. What is your outlook on USD CAT? All right, let's have a look at the pound pair. So we're starting with GU. Now, again, knowing this one made a weekly break right there. And so right now it's probably in a weekly pullback. But again, very, very strong candle. We had a very nice bearish week. So is this bearish week pulling us back? setting us up for um, next week's news because once again the daily push is this and right now the market is pulling back and it fulfilled to the pip right this little imbalance like if you have a look at last week's analysis pretty much we had one imbalance above the 50 percent and one below the one below was perfectly fulfilled and we did below the 50 percent. so right now the positioning of price is getting much better for a long setup now before we take a long setup we're just gonna need a forward train change up there is the last forward breakdown Okay, and we had like a trend change here. So that's where the bearish trend change happened, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. There were a couple of shorts on G as well, but again, not setups that tick my rules. So currently there is a situation, okay? The question is like, are we going to start reversing bullish and then taking a long? Or are we maybe going to respect, push a little bit further down and then maybe a line, okay? I do think longs are going to come in at some point in time, but the question is when and from where? Okay, we are having like a very strong probably demand zone right there. I really like it. And you can see actually the market just pinged it, reacted. So is it possible for us to come in deeper? Is it possible for us to take this as a liquidity gap and maybe come inside the weekly range and then maybe get along from here? We do not know. So again, don't try to predict too much, but focus on what is happening right now. In fact, the market is bearish right now. So if you go on Monday, wait for the market to clearly get inside that zone, right? And then you can also look for a short trade. OK, but if the market starts massively impulsing and maybe causes a forward trend change, then, of course, you have your first sign that the market is going to reverse and that maybe we're going to start attacking the high. OK, so macro bias, absolutely bullish um, in like current forward or like forward is not really lower time frame, but I speak about the macro bias on the daily because I've been utilizing the daily a lot. Again, the daily time frame is bullish. Right now, the forward is bearish. So when the forward time frame aligns bullish with the daily, that is when we can start getting some into some high probability long trades. Okay, so there it is. You decide what to do. Either wait for the market to align bullish, take a short, or just observe and let's see what's going to happen. Because again, we don't know. GJ, let's check it out. So GJ, um, inside bar, but kind of bullish. Mm still bullish on the weekly time frame has uh quite some pullback to uh, to make and then imbalance to fill daily time frame so on the daily time frame this again broke the high then it broke the low so yeah the daily time frame is kind of bearish within this range the market pulls back above 50 it tries to push like for four days it tries to push it fails and on friday it just came in and swept this liquidity so what's going to happen next? Again, we don't know. The forward time frame, it shifted bullish here. Then it shifted bearish there. So just to mark it up for you guys, there is a, the breakup. There is a breakdown. Had another breakdown. And then we have the final change change to the upside. We have this demand zone. So like the other JPYs, I mean, they, they had this very big push on uh, Friday bullish so are we gonna be making like new highs right now and then maybe aligning bearish are we gonna be starting with a bearish push and then taking a long trade i don't know and nobody knows okay so let's see what's gonna happen let's flow with the markets again gj is more bearish because we're still staying within this daily bearish leg and we have a lot of imbalance to be filling to the downside so maybe there is gonna be a bearish move but again maybe we don't know so if the market keeps carrying on to the upside then just keep carrying on following it until you're wrong because again you take a long 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 until you're wrong which and when you're wrong when the trend change happens when the trend change happens 
Start taking shorts. You take shorts until when? Until you're wrong, until a trend change happens, right? And then you just do the same thing over and over again. And that's why trading is simple, but a lot of you make it complicated. So again, let's follow the flow. Let's see what happens. And of course, stay tuned for the Tuesday Outlook in which we're going to have another look. Well, gold had an overall bullish week, but I really don't like the rejection that happened. Like, probably it happened on Friday. Well, not really. So what I do like, though, is that we have a little bit of an imbalance right there, something to target, like because if like we have right now a daily break, well, I thought this one is liquidity. It actually got taken and not only did it get taken, but we came all the way up to take like all of these flat highs right there. So this is why we're having this nice reaction right now. Now, the, the thing with the daily is, is that you might take this as your daily low. Right. And right now, the market is pulling back towards this daily hard low formation while we have that weekly imbalance and we have this uh this big demand on the bottom so slightly bit tricky slightly bit tricky on on gold because it could react from here but maybe it, it could come down right there and react from here so when it comes to the daily it's 50 50 again i would consider this zone but i would also consider this zone because again this looks like the overall macro swing range okay and then, of course, if we drop to the quality time frame, it's probably going to be bearish because, again, we formed this. Then we came in, we took out the liquidity of the high, and then we immediately aligned bearish. Something that we definitely could expect, knowing what the liquidity we took to the left. A new break of structure down, and there is the last supply. So, yeah. So, again, what, what, why... I really like the quality time frame is because it's it's not that high but it's also not that low so right now the daily time frame like you can see it's uh it's not making a lot of sense but the quality time frame is just looking very clear we broke up we broke down we broke down last lower high so again let's see what's gonna happen is the market gonna pull us back to give us a short is it gonna start bearish tap us inside the zone and then maybe start aligning bullish again we don't know and there is a lot of news incoming next week so again stay patient and wait for it now I would definitely entertain a long idea from here because that is uh, what I think to be like a daily higher low formation. Not perfect, not perfect, but definitely is a daily higher low formation. And it also got formed by filling in this imbalance right there. Okay, so yeah, we formed a weekly imbalance, but that might not get fulfilled right now. So again, monitor the 4H and if you want the highest probability bet, wait for the market to align bullish on the 4H and then you take a high probability long with that overall weekly and daily bullish bias. Okay, so that's gold. I'm overall bullish, but first I need to see some more signs for it actually being bullish because currently in the foliage, it's bearish. So again, guys, in the comments, let me know what you think about gold. An incredible week for the indices. Why? Because we had a lot of uh, earning reports this week and we can see that the stock market is going crazy to the upside once again. And we're making history on US 30 because we stayed within this range since here all the way into here. That is uh, almost a year within this range and we finally broke out of it so there is a brand new what is a weekly break that deserves a bold line and a nice weekly structure break to the top right maybe make it bigger right so i'm gonna just keep this one right here okay um, now I'm just going to delete this and we're going to perform a new analysis. There comes the imbalance from here. And then there was one right there as well fulfilled. So everything is fulfilled. Everything is fulfilled right there. So we're just going to be waiting right now for a new imbalance to form within here. Okay. Dropping on the daily time frame, you can see like we chopped around, we chopped around. And then pretty much this is the big daily push. So that's the daily low. That's the daily high right now. And we can start expecting a pullback. Okay. And of course, where can the pullback occur? Then there is one below the 50% and then there is one above the 50%. So there are two imbalance areas to be looking for. And yeah, I mean, the forward time frame was just bullish. Like here it broke up, pulls back higher low and then it just imposes. And it's, it's very tricky to be traded. Like when it comes to structure, because indices right now are just very volatile. And when it comes to market structure... But right now, I won't say it's a very high, probably long, because we're, we're, we just took out that massive weekly high high. We're very high on the range. So if you try to take a long from here, be careful. But this is pretty much what we have right now. The last structure break, the last demand zone. So let's see if it's going to pull back right there and then give us a long trade. If it makes a trend change to the downside, then of course we can start expecting for the market to give us a pullback, fill an imbalance, go to 50%, and then from there again, initiate higher. Okay, so that's US 30. Again, history is being made. We're, we're making this, well, not really history, but we're making this very nice weekly structure break. And you can see we are just 4% away from all time highs. So again, it looks like the stock market is pretty, pretty, pretty bullish. So, well, not the stock market, but just uh, 
Dow Jones. Let's see at the tech index, which is currently going a little bit down, which is good. Because this one also is very massively bullish on the weekly time frame. And again, yeah, there is lots of imbalance on the weekly to be fulfilled. When it's going to be fulfilled, we, we never know. Like here, we took out that high. We already reacted from it. And the next high is pretty much this, which is very, very, very uh, <clears throat> far away from current price. So let's focus on what is happening right now. Well, let's maybe delete this. Let's make a brand new analysis. I'm just going to focus on daily. Daily low. Daily high. Right. Last daily structure break uh imbalance below 50 percent imbalance below 50 percent fulfilled okay so fulfilled perfectly tap the 50 percent so again nasdaq could be getting ready for a long and you saw us 30 massively went down oh, up this one is going down right now so usually they go hand in hand when it comes to the quality time frame well this aligned bearish either here or here and right now we're having this very little structure break to the downside. So that is the last lower high. So if we manage to break above this one, then definitely start longing. Maybe the market can continue going down a little bit. Then you still look for a bullish trend change. And then you still look for longs. Why? Because of the macro bias and the overall bullish sentiment of the indices. So as of exactly right now, the market is in a very specific place. 50% filling in imbalance as well. So very good place. But again, we need to see that clue that the market will actually commit to the upside by giving us a probably trend change to the upside. Okay, so this is pretty much what I'm looking for. Uh, S&P also like, uh, look at that. Massively pushing up. Still expanding within that, within that daily range. Again, we'll still have that imbalance being left right there. So what I'm looking for in this one is clear bearish signs and there was a short trade so here we actually have a break up and then we broke down and then we broke down again and then we came in to retest the supply right there so you can see it's actually very nicely short biased and we can be expecting this low right there to be taken um yeah so actually looks pretty good because as i told you like when you look for a short trade when you are at a higher high on the daily you want to see the forward time frame shift bearish and right now of course this one is a target that one is a target and then of course all of these imbalances are targets so coming coming in for uh, in the incoming weeks i'm going to be looking for shorts on uh, s p there was a short right here so i trade this after your stock exchange right so there was a short right there then there was a fanatic model one entry right there and on the previous days it didn't really provide anything that that ticked my plan okay so this was the only one but i was on the charts on thursday i had a name day on thursday so we're outside again trades always happen when you're not on the charts right so that's smp that's smp looking for shorts looking for all of these targets to be fulfilled okay and yeah bitcoin just a very quick look i'm still just looking for this i just keep moving this arrow that's what i'm looking for very choppy waiting for something in ethereum i don't consider it at all okay so this is how i want to wrap it up hopefully you guys enjoyed the analysis let me know what are your favorite pairs for next week let me know how you performed this week did you win did you lose what did you reflect on what is the lesson that you learned again it doesn't matter if you won or lost what matters is the conclusions you draw and many times you think that a winning week week is a great week well if you don't reflect on that week and if you also didn't follow your plan during that week it's still a bad week okay so always make sure to reflect and yes let me know what your favorite pairs are i can't wait to talk to you on uh, tuesday so wishing an incredible weekend and wishing a crushing week ahead of you and again watch out for all the news that are incoming